Hey, it's Michael and good morning everyone. So today we are going to discuss on the um, vascular tissues. Okay. <coughs> now vascular tissues, they are transport tissues that transport substances throughout the plant via the xylem tissues and phloem tissue. Right? And you know already by this point that xylem tissue transports mineral ions and water while phloem tissues transport organic substances. Okay. Now, in the roots, these vascular tissues, they are located in the vascular cylinder. Now, this is the vascular cylinder, okay, in a cross-section of a monocot, and this is the vascular cylinder in the cross-section of an eudicot, okay? Now, two indicators that tells you this is a cross-section of a root, okay, because of the root hair here, and then because of this um, casparian strip, okay, which is inside the endodermis layer all right this is an endodermis and this endodermis has the casparian strip okay you learn in detail about this casparian strip in the, in the second semester okay now so this is the vascular cylinder right this is the vascular cylinder where we have the vascular tissues in roots all right so the vascular tissues consists of the this is the xylem and this is the phloem right xylem and phloem Okay, in monocot and in an iricot, this is the xylem, okay, and this is the phloem, all right, cross section of these roots. Now, in the stem, this vascular tissues forms the vascular bundle. So, a cross section of a, a monocot, okay, this is where the vascular bundle is, where we have the xylem and phloem. Right, about the vascular bundle, so banyak. Okay, ini di stem monocot. Now in iridocot stem, right cross section. This is the vascular bundle. Right, we have the xylem here, and then we have the phloem here. Okay, ini ialah sclerenchyma phloem. You we discuss about this later on. Okay, so now kamu nampak ah structure dia. Ini ialah uh, vascular bundle dalam iudicot near stem right you can see this is xylem and this is the phloem now close up right okay now <coughs> vascular bundle in monocot okay so this is the xylem part right and this is the phloem part that forms the vascular bundle right phloem xylem so this is how they look like Except this one, this is an A space. Okay. Okay, so well in Udicot, okay, uh, close up, these are the xylem. Okay, this is the phloem, right? Between xylem and phloem is the vascular cambium, obviously. And this is the uh phloem sclerenchyma. Okay, to be more specific, phloem fiber. Okay, so all these forms the vascular bundle in uh, stem of an eudicot. Okay. Now in the leaves, right, this vascular tissues is found in the leaf vein. Okay, leaf vein. So this is the leaf vein, a cross section of the leaf vein. Okay, you can see. Okay, this is the xylem, this is the phloem, and these are the bundle sheet cells. You learn detail about this bundle sheet cell later at the end of semester one okay all right again a cross section okay so if this is the leaf vein okay so the xylem and phloem should be here right it's too tiny to see okay so a stoma all right or a stoma or stomata consists of okay gut cells you can see these gut cells right a pair of gut cells with a stomatal pore okay these are adjacent cells okay adjacent cells okay now xylem tissue divided into primary xylem and secondary xylem okay now primary xylem they are formed from procambium at the shoot or root tips now, secondary xylem form 
from the vascular cambium during wood formation in the stem or root. Okay. Now, xylem tissue consists of a vessel element, tracheids, xylem parenchyma, and xylem sclerenchyma or xylem fiber. Okay. So, when we talk about vessel elements, straight away you have in your mind that is part of the xylem tissue. Right? The same goes for tracheids. Okay. Xylem parenchyma, obviously. Okay. Because of the word xylem here. And the same goes for xylem fiber or xylem sclerenchyma. Immediately you know those are part of the xylem tissue. Okay. So, tinggal dua lagi. Maksudnya, vessel element dan tracheids, itu ialah xylem tissue. Alright. Senang. Okay, and then primary xylem form from cambium, secondary xylem form from the vascular cambium. Now, let's take a look one by one, right, of the vessel, um, sorry, um, xylem tissues, the vessel elements. This is how a vessel elements look like, okay. It's a water conducting cell of the xylem. So, I'm meaning to say, vessel elements transport water or conduct water. So, vessel elements present or occur in most angiosperms. Angiosperms are tumbuhan berbunga. Okay, as well as a few gymnosperms and a few seedless vascular plants. Okay, so they are vessel shape or tubular. Okay, then elongated cells that are adapt at functional maturity. Meaning to say, at matured, these vessel elements, they are dead cells. Okay, they don't have nucleus, they don't have cytoplasm. They just have empty uh, spaces. Alright? So, these empty spaces are the spaces where the water is being conducted or transported or carried. Okay, buena paka, vessel shape. Sorry, vessel shape and elongated, memanjang. Okay, elongated cells. The vessel dia ada ruang kosong. Okay, tubular or vessel shapes means dia ruang kosong, berongga. Right, largest cells in the xylem. Okay, it is the largest cell in the xylem. And then it has wide or wider hollow lumen. You can see the lumen is wide and very hollow. All right. But shorter, they are pendek pendek saja. Shorter, thinner wall. Okay, the wall, the cell wall is very thin. Okay, and less tapered if compared with tracheids. Okay, you think was ini, the hujung ni. They are less tapered. Okay, they are less tapered. Ini yang betul. Ini slightly misleading. Okay, this is less tapered compared with tracheids. Kalau tracheid, they are more tapered. Something like this. Okay, if tracheids. Okay, then these vessel elements, tapered ends, right? Yeah, tapered ends, open, right? And align end to end to form long pipes. Boleh paham? Tengok dia, um, open, alright? These tapered ends are open and align end to end. From one um, vessel element to another vessel element. Sorry, this is these are tracheids. Sorry, eh? misleading. Yang ini. Okay, so it's um, tapered ends, right? Tapered ends are open and align end to end to form long pipes. This sangat panjang. Pipe yang sangat panjang. Okay, so if you compare with tracheids, okay, it is more tapered. The end is more tapered. Tapered ni condong lah, macam ni. Really saying it. Okay. If you compare with this vessel element, dia kurang sikit. Okay. Yang ini paling contoh paling senang tengok lah. You see? Their ends are less tapered compared with tracheids. They sangat tapered. Alright. Again, let me rephrase. The ends of vessel elements are open and align end to end. Okay. To form vessels or long pipes. Now, the end walls of vessel elements, okay, have perforation plates. Can you see these perforation plates? Okay, which enables water to flow freely through the vessels. 
and then secondary cell wall of these vessel elements they are impregnated with lignin okay and thickened with patterns primary cell wall okay um primary cell wall ini apa ini a uh, vessel element is very thin in dalam ni okay kalau tengok yang di luar ni secondary cell wall dia okay is highly lignified and it has pattern right now it comes a pattern i will put explain later okay now so there are two types of vessel elements okay protoxylum okay these are the first form of xylem vessel can be stretched and then lignin deposition all right or the lignin is deposited in the form of annular can you see the annular okay then spiral okay which act as um, reinforcements for the vessel during elongation so now in your mind um, protoxylum can be stretched or elongated okay and they are um, lignin right the lignin uh, pattern is annular or spiral now metaxylum okay they are the type of the vessel elements okay they have extensive extensive lignification all right on the xylem vessels okay and then cannot grow or stretch because these are dead cells okay obviously because they are extensive or um, heavily lignified okay banyak lignin so the lignin is dispos disposited sorry deposited in the form of you can see sclerification all right reticulates or pitted so kalau kita tengok sini balik dalam gambar raja ini ini ialah pitted okay and this is one example of meta xylem now functions of these vessel elements transport water and mineral ions as well as to support the plants obviously because they are lignified right especially the uh, meta xylem they are highly lignified okay so this is the proto xylem that i mentioned earlier which is the annular and spiral ingat okay this is the annular and this is the spiral this is how they look like okay this is a longitudinal section all right this is a longitudinal section of the um, xylem vessel or vessel elements sorry uh, let me check here okay so vessel elements also known as known as xylem vessel right if you come across the word xylem vessel is referred as vessel element or xylem elements those are again referred to vessel elements okay you can see the annular spiral then these are the meta xylems right so pitted reticulate scleriform how they look like from a longitudinal section okay so now a cross section okay a cross section of the stem of an iricot this is what you would expect to see in the xylem you won't be able to see the arrangement of the lignin okay but a longitudinal section will show something different okay you can see the angular and the spiral uh, pattern of the lignified Xylem. so class up to this point i hope, I hope you can imagine already a cross section what would you expect to see okay a longitudinal section what would you expect to see okay so these are the pith which you can expect to see many parenchyma cells okay this is the cortex right Again, cortex is where you uh, expect to see the parenchyma cells. Okay.
Now, trachytes. These are the water conducting cells of the xylem as well. Okay. So, trachytes, they occur in the xylem of all vascular plants. Okay, they are long. Sorry, um, trachytes are tubular, very similar with the vascular element. Elongated cells that adapt at functional maturity. Meaning to say, uh, when these cells are matured, okay, same with the vascular elements, they are dead cells. Okay. Right, they are long, okay, thin cells, right, with tapered ends okay so these cells are very thin and then they have tapered ends and their ends are more tapered compared with the vessel element okay so you can see the end of these trachytes is very tapered right compared with this vessel element their end is not as uh, tapered okay compare with the trachyt and then trachyt has small lumens okay and hollow when matured okay small lumen and hollow when matured thick lignified secondary cell walls and covered with lots of pits okay nampak punya pit pits ni you know why uh, the significance of this pitch? So the water it can move either um, uh, horizontal, sorry, uh, ventricle, right, or horizontally, side by side. So the water will uh, move upwards or side by side, all right. Now the function of this trick is to transport water and mineral ions through the pits, okay as well as through the lumen and then to support the plants xylem parenchyma okay slightly smaller than other parenchyma cells okay they are young undifferentiated xylem newly formed from the meristems so this xylem parenchyma very similar with the parenchyma cells okay except the parenchyma cells that you learned earlier those are part of the ground system this is uh, vascular tissues Okay, next, um, the serum parenchyma located in the medullary rays in wood, right? And then cell walls not lignified, and then store starch in the form of granules. Functions to store food and differentiate to form vessels and trachytes. Now, uh, this should be vessels, vessel elements. Lagi okay, yeah? compare vessels here, ataupun xylem vessel, vessel elements, and trachytes, or xylem trachytes. Xylem sclerenchyma, okay, originate from all trachytes, right? So these all trachytes eventually they become xylem sclerenchyma, and this xylem, this um, xylem sclerenchyma, they are shorter and narrower than the trachytes. Thicker cell walls and trachytes, right? Functions give additional support or mechanical strength to the plant. Right now. Front tissues. These are vascular tissues that translocate. We don't use the word um, transfer, right? Here we use the word translocate. Sucrose. Sucrose is the main form of the organic substances uh, that plants synthesize during photosynthesis, right? Sucrose. So vascular tissues translocate sucrose, right? Phytohormones. I'm sure you know this. You have already learned in Form 5 and other organic compounds from the leaf to the stem and roots okay and fallen tissues uh, provide structural support to the plants and there are, there are two types of phloem primary and secondary phloem so similarly with the um, primary primary xylem all right um, this primary phloem consists of proto phloem and meta phloem right the phloem is first the first phloem formed in the elongation zone of stem and root okay while the meta phloem is the phloem that matures after elongation now secondary phloem all right these are the phloem that is formed from the vascular cambium during secondary growth so now i hope this clear 
okay uh, your understanding about the primary and secondary phloem all right sorry the primary and secondary growths all right if you refer to the uh, previous lectures we talk a lot about this primary and secondary growths in plants okay now this phloem tissues consists of very similar with the xylem tissues all right okay but for phloem tissues they have this phloem sclerenchyma okay or phloem fibers and then from scleron from parenchyma sorry I'm more excited from sclerenchyma let me rephrase from sclerenchyma from parenchyma right companion cells and sieve tube elements or sieve tube members okay sieve tube members companion cells from parenchyma and from sclerenchyma from tissues can be found in stems, roots, and leaf almost throughout the plant. Right now, sieve elements or sieve tip, uh, sieve members. Okay, these are sugar conducting cell of the phloem. Right. So if you look here, all right, this sieve element or sieve members consists of sieve cells and sieve tubes. Okay. <clears throat> if you refer to the diagram here okay this is the sieve tube sieve cells are not found here right okay not found here so um sieve cells all right there are young cells with nuclei okay and lack of sieve plate this is the sieve plate so meaning to say, right? Ah yes. This is the sieve cell. Sorry, kita nampak. Okay, ni companion cell. This is different, right? Okay, this is different. This is not sieve element, right? But this companion cell is one of the um, phloem tissues. Okay, so sieve tube and sieve cells. Okay, young cells with nuclei lack of lack of um, sieve plates. Sieve tubes, these are mature cells that has thin primary cell wall. It has sieve plates, you can see the sieve plates here. Okay. Protoplasts, yes, protoplasts and sap vacuoles, but lack of nuclei. Okay, lack of nuclei. The protoplast is not shown here to uh, ease or facilitate understanding of this sieve, sieve tube and how they are interconnected with the other sieve tube. Now, sieve tubes, they are long, panjang, and slender cells connecting end to end, all right, connecting end to end to form continuous sieve tubes for translocation, all right? A cross section of the sieve tubes may be rectangular or round or polygonal. This is a cross section of the sieve tubes. Now, the cell wall, sorry, a cross wall of the sieve tubes, okay. Sorry, class, this is sieve plate. I guess, uh, I guess I'm so tired already. This is a sieve plate. This is the um, <clears throat> sieve tubes. Okay, let me rephrase on point number five, all right. A cross section, a cross section of this um, sieve tube, okay, meaning to say, the bra arasini. Right, yeah, not shown here. All right, cross section of this sieve tube may be rectangular, meaning say they are segi empat begitu, right? And then our uh, rectangular or round or polygonal. Okay, so the shape varies. A cross section of this sieve uh, tube will give you various um, view. Okay, so cross wall of sieve tube all right from lignified sieve plates with holes to allow flow of protoplasts okay now this um, transportation or movement of this protoplasts you will learn in detail in the second semester if sieve, each sieve tube member 
okay has a companion cell okay you can see this companion cell right and this companion cell has nucleus okay and connected by numerous plasmodesma ta okay kalau satu plasmodesma so between this sieve tube this sieve tube cell with this companion cell these two cells are connected with a plasmodesma or many plasmodesma ta okay so sieve elements or sieve tube translocate organic food like sucrose and amino acids okay don't forget the phytochrome hormones okay ah uh, yes this is the cross section of the sieve tube okay so look at the shape this is uh polygonal right this is uh almost rectangular okay dia macam macam bentuk okay and companion cell they are when it comes to their size they are next to this sieve tube always can be found next to the sieve tube and their size is smaller okay we know okay their size is smaller right sieve tube and companion cell right this is the sieve plate with uh with sieve plate pole now companion cells okay these are the sugar conducting cell of the firm as well right now these companion cells right they are small slender cells right fitting neatly end to end beside a sieve tube right they can be found beside or adjacent to this sieve tube these are companion cells has thin primary cell wall and usually square in cross section Tengok sini cross section dia, right? Is it is squarish, right? Dia memang squarish, okay? Square in cross section. And then nuclei is present with compact protoplast. Okay, has high organic content. Sorry, has high organic content and mitochondria. Okay, always remember. Companion cell has many mitochondria okay lack of lack of sap vacuole okay can you see this is the companion cell okay and this is the um sieve element okay <clears throat> oh sorry class this is the companion cell Right, and this is the sieve tube element and in this cross section it was just so happened right the cross is being taken done in such a way where this component cell appear to be bigger than the sieve tube right but actually the sieve tube when it comes to their lumen they are bigger okay or wider compared with the diameter of this um, uh, component cell okay so again, back to companion cell, they have set back cool and then provide ATP for the loading of sucrose into the sieve tubes from the neighboring mesophyll cells. Okay, so I'm meaning to say, let's say it's near the mesophyll. Eh? Here, if we have mesophyll, mesophyll is the site where we have uh, photosynthesis, right? So photosynthesis generates or synthesizes food. Those food, okay, <clears throat> okay, will be loaded into the companion cell and from the component cell those food will be loaded into the sieve tubes to load all right okay the loading or to load or the loading of this uh, food right from the mesophyll to the component cell component cell into the sieve tubes requires atps all right and atps are generated by mitochondria that's why these component cells they have many mitochondria right many mitochondria okay so here right sieve tube elements are alive but without nucleus right few organelles and only strands of cytoplasm those cytoplasms all right it is needed for cytoplasmic streaming which is explains the translocation of food from one sieve tube to another sieve tubes 
okay and then have to be added by companion cells which require excrete right and then the prism of the companion cells and safety element is joined through pores in side walls you need to say through the plasmodesma all right these pores are the plasmodesma plasmodesma or plasmodesmata okay and companion cells have many mitochondria to provide atp for the loading of the food all right now from parenchyma okay you can see the from parenchyma here okay so they are undifferentiated phloem right and then same structure as the meristem parenchyma but smaller in size as thin primary cell wall usually elongated prisms okay elongated prisms living cells with protoplast and nuclei store starch and differentiate to form phloem cells which is the sieve tubes as well as storage cells okay um which is the from parenchyma right now from sclerenchyma these are structures okay which is the same as the ground tissue sclerenchyma can be found inside or outside the irrigate stems protect and support the thin wall of from cells okay so that's it for today okay so yeah i'm, I'm a bit rushing 